<laughs> All right. Cue the cicadas. Where are the cicadas? Right. They were right on cue. Did you hear them start when you did that? Oh. They're just a little quieter today because it's not as hot. Oh. Let's start. Ready? Go. But we've already started. We did. We I did. know. All that's getting cut. No, out. it's funny. You're in control here. Yeah, I'm in control here. This is the one place like that I can edit you. Oh, I feel like we should address the fact that we are in fact married. We get that question a lot. Are you married? Or I thought you were married. Yeah, we get it a lot. Are we married? We don't invest in a seven dollar ring that's like right. this one. I should take this glove off. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Real silicone, baby. That's right. Married him up. No, yes, I think, married I think, 25 years. That We had a big like wedding anniversary. And right? It was on our anniversary. <laughs> you can't see how much I love this woman. <laughs> Come on. I married her up. 25 years. Nice. Stuck with me. Okay. Let's talk about our projects this weekend. Yours went far better than mine did. Eh, mine went, started out well, swimmingly. I got things done. You did. And you were on a, man, you were on a rocket ship I to was, a beautifully a refinished mission. door mm -hmm. until you got right before the finish line. You were like that marathon runner that thought that, that, the, thought, it, the, thought that was the finish line. 10 meters too And soon. stopped. Yeah, that was me. Or yeah. the one that fell down. Or the, the hurdler. That got to the first, the hurdle, last the last hurdle. hurdle, and tripped over it. Yeah. That was me. The last week. hurdle was stain. The last hurdle was stain. And yeah. The, so my project this week was to strip, refinish, and stain the front door. What I did not take into account was that sometimes 140-year-old pine has turned into basically fat lighter. So parts of the grain are very sap heavy, and that sap dries and hardens and it makes it almost impossible for that wood to take stain and it's not going to take that that part of the grain is not going to take stain the same way that another part of the grain is so my project went badly and that's all we need to say about that We meet again, my mortal enemy. <laughs> You're going down. Not too bad. I can live with that. Kevin one, screw zero. <laughs> oh yeah. Did you do it? I did it. How many, how many? Six, zero. Ha, ha, Kevin zero. wins. doorknob hidden inside a dirt dauber nest <laughs> as one does no this is not a doorknob look we just found the <laughs> doorbell did you say we found a doorknob i said we found a doorknob your hands are huge i'm a monster we found the doorbell hidden inside a dirt dauber nest probably need to soak that soak you soak you you cleaned it off even more and found out it says push, but... Upside down. It had been upside down, I bet, for a hundred years. Oh, sure. They would have never years. flipped that around. I don't think it's ever been off the door. The original finish I was still that. under the doorknob, and it has been upside down. I know. And I said, should we put it back on upside down? I mean, like, down? maybe we should. No. I don't know. I think we got to put it on the I'm right. a purist. Maybe we should. I don't know. No. <laughs> What are we doing now to the door? Well, we're working on repairing our 150 year old door. And as you can see, some moron at some point decided they needed to kick the door in. And so we have a lot of wood loss to our Especially door. here. Tons of wood loss. What kind of gloves did you buy me? I'm not committing a homicide. Staining gloves. 
Okay, all right, good job. I'm gonna use Abitron wood epoxy to fill in our spot. But the problem with Abitron wood epoxy is that it does not stain, it doesn't take stain. So you have to tint the epoxy and get it as close to your color as possible before you use the product. And number two concern is that once you mix part A and part B, it immediately starts to harden. So you want to mix it, you want to mix your tint in just part A first. Get your color consistent in the color that you want it. Uh oh. Then add part B and start working it. Because if you put A and B together and then you try to tint it, by the time you get it the right color, it's gonna be hard. My concern is that we're going with really dark stain. So I wanna get my putty really dark. And I don't know how dark I'm going to be able to get it, but we're going to get it as dark as we can. But even if it's not exactly the same shade, this is a nearly 200 year old door that we're saving. Flaws are just character. So why you married me? Absolutely, baby. Oh, you're supposed to say no, you're not flawed in any way. Oh, no, you're not flawed in any way. Thank you. You're absolutely All perfect. Right. Need equal parts. Mm -hmm. A little more dye. I'm trying to get it as dark as I can. Did that dye come with it? No, you have to order this separately, and it only comes like in three or four colors. And I got the darkest one because I knew we were going to do the door dark. And this is all available on Amazon. We don't have a promo code because we don't sponsored products <laughs> we want to believe in what we use but if the things we use if those people want to sponsor us <laughs> if the things we believe in want to give us some sponsorships or a swipe up code we'd be okay with that all right so here we go trying to get it in just set it here My friend Gina at Victorian by the Bay, if you're on Instagram, you should follow her, is an actual sculptor and she uses Abitron and you should see like when she's done applying it, it doesn't need anything. <laughs> I am not as advanced. way more than I needed to. So we're gonna let it sit overnight and it'll dry. And then I'll come back tomorrow and I'll sand it smooth. It'll give us a good structurally sound door. That'll make, this is gonna make this door just as structurally sound, if not more so than it was when it was first put in this house.
the reason I love Smart Strip so much is because it's not, it's not caustic. It's, you can like get it all over you and it doesn't burn. Obviously you don't let it sit there, but it's not like those strippers that are so incredibly caustic. If they get on your skin, they immediately just skin like burn. they're on fire. And yeah. um, Smart Strip doesn't do that. And so I love it and it's really effective. And then I went to put the stain on and it did not go well. So now we're starting over again. So I ended my weekend stripping it again. And I think I've decided I may have to paint it. Don't feel like you need to message. I know about wood conditioners. I know about all the different things you can do to wood, all the different kinds of stains. Um, we've tried a little bit of everything on this door. And I think it may just be to the point where the door is gonna get a beautiful color. Here's the secret to a strong marriage. <laughs> Have the focus, same favorite colors. Well, focus <laughs> on the things that you have in common. And yes. we love this color blue. It looks yes. kind of gray it there. but kinda, It looks very purple in this, but really it's it's basically French provincial blue is our is our favorite color. Yes. He has colors that he likes more than, than I do, and he uses them in his design. And I have colors that I like more than he does that I use. But the color that we both think is the most beautiful color in the world is that French right. provincial blue. Speaking of, we had our first... Uh, Pro, uh, <laughs> project post game. You couldn't remember it this time. I know, I couldn't remember. I was going to say progress. Should we let the people see the project post game right now? Kevin Berry, captain of the Weekend Warrior team for his project post game. Can you tell us about that uh, penalty that got thrown at you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? That, that nail came out of nowhere, and uh, I thought that that was a foul. And, uh, you know, it wasn't called, but, you know, sometimes that happens. What? Can you give us a report from the medic after that little incident? I uh, went back to the locker room. We had that checked out. They said we're fine. A little tetanus shot on Monday. I'll be good to go. Good news. Good news. So can you tell us a little bit about the specific plays you worked on today? Yeah, we had a, we had a demo wall out, and it was a, it was a daunting task, you know, but uh, you just got to take it one board at a time. Give it 110%. Seems like your teammates let you down a little bit this weekend. Can oh, you expand no, no. on that? No, I'd never throw my teammates under the bus. Uh, they were there for me. When I needed them, all I had to do was say, Lane! <laughs> Came running. <laughs> well, it seems like you've uh, finally got that goal that you've been hunting for so, so, so long. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Uh, it is a great feeling to, uh, to to finally have all those joists in. You know, we, there, were, there were a few weeks there when I didn't know if it was going to happen, but... Uh, we finally got them all in, and, and I feel great. You know, some people are calling you the goat. What do you think about that? You know, uh, we're looking for some goats to chew up some of this ivy over here. Uh, so if you see any, we'd love to have some. All right. Well, that was Kevin, captain of the Team Weekend Warrior, with his project post game. God bless. So that was fun. But you had an adventure some weekend. Adventure some? Adventure us? Adventure us? I don't know. Traumatic? First step into the floor i took a good nail to the shin yep about a two and a half inch gash gash rusty nasty old flathead it nail it wasn't terribly deep but it was rusty and rusty All it was a 130 year old nail is so. that when you came out to show it to me blood was coursing down your leg yes. i felt like that was a deep enough cut that and it needed to be addressed by a medical professional and what did i say It'll be fine. Well, I'm off to a good start. Yeah. <laughs> First step in. Hadn't accomplished anything. When we say blood, sweat, and tears, we mean blood, sweat, and tears. We oh. had all three this weekend. Blood, sweat, and tears. Did we have tears? Well, I might have cried a little Did bit over the, over the door. Maybe a little bit. Oh. But. It's you tonight. They have to do this. Well, there's <laughs> no squatos out here. That's you probably not it. completed a project that we started 
<laughs> well, the, like the first episode Four one, weekends, wasn't it? Yeah, well, first episode. Well, first episode was just like we just starting, pulled a floor. But we finally got all of the floor joists in. Yeah, it went pretty smoothly, I'd say. There, it was a little more difficult because we waited it went until after the, the plumbing got roughed in, and so right. now I've got pipes I have to work around. Uh, but we made it work. Well, it was smooth, but it was complex because there are a couple other walls that are in that room, and one of the joists runs right under one of those one of those other walls that's not being removed. So and we're kind of moving out. those walls, so that was another thing that I did was a lot of demo on those walls, and I we're keeping the door frame, but we're slightly adjusting one wall basically. Just barely, but we kept finding more. That room, as we've talked about before, is the room with with the only like wood rot, dry rot. So we kept kind of finding some more spots of rot we needed to adjust. And we've realized that we need to put a load bearing wall as the back wall of the half bath. So it was also like you were putting in joists, but then we were also planning. It was mm -hmm. like plan as you go sort of, because things are, rehabilitation is a lot of monitor and adjust and right. being prepared to be unprepared <laughs> <laughs> but we we knew we were going to run some extra support under there for our heavy bathtubs and water and people in the two different spots but we kind of have adjusted a little bit because we've got to carry more weight from upstairs right. we're we're, we're going to put a bathtub, bathtub directly there, right? above right where the other bathtub is going to be right so we've got to carry even more weight from upstairs and then we also found some more rot up right. there that we've got to address so we need new joists upstairs now uh, I think that well. was the one part of the whole house where um, the roof had been allowed to fail for many, many, many years. Hey, look, there's a big loud construction truck and they're watching us video on the front porch. It's our life. <laughs> um, the roof had been allowed to fail and so that's the one area, that area and then the back, the, the one little add-on bathroom, there had been tons of water intrusion and we didn't realize that the floor and the floor joists and what in, the, in what was that closet, but is now going to be the one bathroom upstairs, I, it's shot, it's gone, it's over. So now we're having to plan structural stability from basically roof to foundation in this one space. Right. But it's, it's not, we knew we were gonna have to do this whole room and it's yeah. basically done now, except for the subfloor, which we're gonna do. We're gonna build a couple more piers. We're gonna do some, instead of not, you know, well, there's some, traditional piers, but now we'll use foundation jacks um, because they're steel, they're amazing, they last forever, um, and they're not quite as ticky as having to build a pier and get it just the right height because it's a jack. You jack it up to where it's supporting, and they can yes. be kind of at different spaces. Occasionally, it's, level. occasionally they do it better now than they used to. Yeah, occasionally. Not always, but uh, yes, those jacks are better. Yes, I do love it. So we'll be putting in some of those. We have to run a bounce beam on one side of the room to support some of the weight from the other cast iron bathtub. And then we'll be putting down subfloor in there. I mean, we'll be ready to tile what? in no time. But that, that's the thing about that house. Oh, we also had the electricians come through. And yes. uh, so we've got some, our electricians that came through and gave us, gave us a thumbs up on getting going on that. So once the electricity is roughed in, I'm, we're gonna be moving and shaking. Yeah, I mean, we haven't had any help at all other than the plumbing's been roughed in with this house and we're just going on weekends as hopefully you guys realize we're not yes, doing this full to time that question somebody the other day was like i mean how do you make any money in life if you don't sell your restorations we have full-time jobs <laughs> yeah this is not what we do for a living <laughs> no. we're neither professionals on youtube nor are we uh, in profession as restoration preservationists we're working two days a week down there killing ourselves but uh, the, my point was, this house really doesn't have far to go. I mean, it's got to have the major systems. Yeah. It's got to have the plumbing and electric and HVAC. Yep. But the rest of it is cosmetic almost. Yeah. I mean, well, cleaning. I mean, here's like the deal. 800 for, hours of cleaning. For most people walking into a house that had to have all the major systems replaced and major structural oh. <laughs> That's work, a big deal. it would be a really oh, big okay. deal. <laughs> <laughs> For us, this is kind of a mid-range project. This is kind of like, look at how close we are to being finished. Yeah. Because we have taken on projects and we have done projects that are that are literally, that are falling into the ground. And it was months and months and months of just getting it. Again, this house that we're sitting in, we purchased and nobody could go inside of it for the first two months because it was so structurally... Um, 
compromised? Compromised that our foundation person, we, we actually had to hire a foundation person. It was so complex. It had to be completely jacked up and the foundation had to be rebuilt. So for us to be able to go into a project and go, hey, all we need is electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and part of the foundation replaced. Yeah, I didn't think of it like that. This is a simple project. Yeah, I guess too, part of it to me though, I hate having to rip out 80s and 90s yeah. crap decisions. Yeah. And, yes. And then bring back character. This house already has all the woodwork. We don't have to strip the woodwork. Yep. We don't One have to redo room. the plaster. I mean, to me, those are huge hurdles. Yeah. Nobody's remodeled it at any point. Literally, I would rather have a house that has never, that has had That's, no yeah. feeders on it for 150 years and deal with structural, electrical, plumbing, than have to go in and deal with somebody who's made really poor design decisions and taken out walls and put in, you know, trendy bathrooms that are going to look out of date and out of place in, you know, 15, 20 years any day wouldn't or, you oh yeah and if they've if they've taken out any of the character i mean this one had the mantles taken out you found an amazing doorknob lock set that you wanted to put yes. in there with yes with I your did. initials on it and i and it was on ebay and it was too expensive and so i sent an offer thinking he'll never I, like i he won't accept this offer. There's no way he'll accept this offer. Well, and then he accepted the offer. You did 50% off day, right? Well, yeah, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I didn't put two and two together. So, yeah. yes. So. So I got that. Now it's going to go in the front door. It's beautiful. You you cleaned it up some. Yes, and the doorknob does not convey. I told Kevin, it doesn't matter when we sell this house someday, <laughs> we ever sell this house, doorknob comes with me. It may take the whole door. It may take, after this, yes, please. <laughs> Can we take the whole door? So you cut your leg, then you cut your ankle. So you bled a lot this weekend. Well, demo is a nasty job. Plus, okay, I did not wear jeans this time because jeans are killing me. It's too hot. You know what will kill you? I can't you? do it. I would rather bleed. Tetanus will kill you. That's why they have tetanus shots. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's why they have Gatorade. <laughs> so you can wear uh, jeans. There's not enough not Gatorade in the world. <sighs> I had to wear shorts, people. I'm sorry. I know it's a bad example. It's a bad example. And to add insult to injury, <laughs> we discovered this weekend. You, you, you got some new pets. I got about 10,000 new pets. Went, we were afraid it was gonna rain. It's really which small, it it's hard to pet tiny, 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 tiny little, tiny little, tiny little, tiny little, hug him and pet him and squeeze him and call him George. We're gonna work, I was gonna work on the door inside because it was gonna rain, it did rain on us. In fact, we lost power for <laughs> an hour or two. <laughs> Had to just nap it out, oh no. We took the door inside and I was like, just put it on the ground. Just put it on the ground, lay it on the floor. And that way I can really just like get down in it. I don't have to worry about leaning on a soft horse and making it wiggle. And I suddenly felt something on my leg and I, you know, brushed it. It was itchy and I brushed it. And then I felt something else and I brushed it and I looked down and I was covered. And I mean, covered. I looked like I had little tiny freckles in fleas. So before we left, we did what, six, seven? Six. I bought six flea bombs. Flea bombs. Ba not bombs, not like bomb. Flea bombs. So we had to do that this weekend. So very altogether anticlimactic, very unexciting weekend. But some major things, major like finish line accomplishment sort of things got done. Yes. Well, you did anyway. Well. I did a whole project and then I have to do it again. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. You did an amazing job of okay. taking that door down and then building it back up. Yeah. It's just the last step didn't quite. That last step is a dozy. So we'll get on that next week. <laughs> Those are the, the, and I will say for people who are, you know, like you're always, everything's, you're always so positive and things are always so great. Those are the days, things like that do happen. They always happen when you're doing these projects where you have things that just sort of snowball or just go not at all like you planned on them going. And those are the days this weekend I was like, this is too much, I can't, I can't handle this. This, I, my, my plate is too full, this is the last straw. I'm leaving, I'm never coming back here again. Of course, I already wanna go back. Throw it in a wood chipper. Yes, buy the whole for, house. Buy a new door for buy blows. Buy a door for blows. <laughs> well. But you did a beautiful job on this. Thank you, thank you. I was very happy to have that done and over with uh got my hangers up as well oh yeah yes your joist hangers got all the joist hangers in my four inch joist hangers which i was very excited to find and he was not excited at all about them <laughs> but those are code so when you're doing 
joist work and joist repair, whether or not you feel like you need joist hangers, they're still code, so you have to put them in. So we got those all put in. Joists are up to code. Yay! I mean, they're double They're up to not code. going anywhere. Yeah, that, that's the thing about these old homes is yeah. when you're saying up to code, most of them are way beyond code. They're yeah. so much structurally. Structurally, at least. structurally, they are so much more solid than any house built now with much stronger wood that they're going to last forever. Yep. You know what? I would love to come back in 120 years, 140, 50 years, and see how many of our little ticky tacky houses that are being thrown up today are still, are still standing. Up. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so that's it, I guess. That's it, I guess. That's all. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.